Okay, guys, we really, really, really mean it this time. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and, 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 holy Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Wow. It's going, and yes, it did go. In spite of all the issues that might have happened with the Raptors on its way up, this ship, this beautiful, magnificent SN8, managed to achieve a little over 12 kilometers, at least the best that I can tell, and it did everything else that it was supposed to do. Just about, but I'm not even going to talk about that right now. What a magnificent moment this was. And not the ascent, even though I was very, very glad that it managed to get to the altitude that it was supposed to, that it didn't blow up, all of those sorts of things. There was a lot more to this test. Using atmospheric raptors to get to this altitude is something that the Starship is never actually going to do, not even on Mars. However, coming back down, that's a different story. And it did come back down, almost exactly as intended, falling into its skydiver mode, leveling out, using its flaps for maneuverability, and making its way back towards the ground. However, it made its way back towards the ground at a pretty terrifying rate of speed, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Instead, the sheer precision of the flaps and the avionics and the aerodynamic qualities of the Starship were beyond impressive. And I say they were beyond impressive because by the time the Starship reached this point and began to execute its last moment maneuver in order to make its landing, it set down almost precisely where it was supposed to, on the landing pad. Well, not exactly on the landing pad, but pretty close. And yeah, it came down a little too fast, but that was spectacular too. I mean, come on. Elon Musk would not have been satisfied if it didn't do that. An earth-shattering kaboom! But still, still, quite an accomplishment. Nevertheless, not a perfect one. There was one particular aspect of this test that I want to talk about amongst all of its triumphs, all of its successes, that we need to discuss if we want to put humans on the red planet. And we're going to discuss all of that in just a few moments. Welcome to yet another episode of The Angry Astronaut. Man, I'm plowing these things out like a madman. I wasn't initially planning on putting out an episode today since I put one out yesterday, but given the fact that I think you folks are waiting for an analysis and everybody in on YouTube is probably putting out their own analyses of what happened with SN8, I think that I definitely need, need to make my opinion heard as well. So all of that having been said, yesterday was an amazing moment in the history of space travel, in the history of aerodynamics. Wow, so many things happened right for that test. It was a spectacular success in almost every respect. And I'm not talking about the landing. I think even the landing went really, really well. Yes, there were a few minor issues with the engines and other aspects of the, of the test, but 
as far as what SN8, in my opinion, is supposed to be, which is a dress rehearsal for a landing on Mars, almost everything went right. I said almost everything. There is actually one aspect of this test that, in my opinion, is cause for concern. Now, once again, this is just one of the first tests with a full-scale prototype. There's a lot of work yet to be done and a lot of things that still need to happen before we can make any solid determinations. But currently, all I have to work with is what happened yesterday, what SpaceX's expectations are when it comes to landing the Starship on Mars, and what we actually saw. For the most part, I was thrilled. But in one respect, I am terrified. And if you are a huge Starship fan and easily triggered, I'd click off right now. But if you want to see all of this, then hang on for the ride. Oh yeah, and before I get started, this Saturday I'm going to have a streaming Q&A with uh, Michael Guerrera, who created the Mars Direct 3.0 concept. This young man created a very innovative way of using something called the Mini Starship to increase our chances of a successful first mission to the Red Planet. That'll be coming up this Saturday, and I'm going to be posting the exact time on my channel. But probably about 2.15 Eastern Standard Time. Now, back to SN8. In order to give an accurate grade as to how this test actually went, we need to look at how SpaceX intends to land on Mars using the Starship. What happened yesterday is essentially what happens from this point to this point. Now, according to SpaceX, the Starship will be able to bleed off enough speed to go from 20 kilometers down to zero in the space of three minutes. Now, based on yesterday's test, that is indeed what happened in Earth's atmosphere. But I'm going to get to that in just a moment. We're going to start off with the good stuff first, and there's an awful lot of it. First of all, let's just talk about the ascent. As far as I'm concerned, SN8 got an A on this one. Now, as a lot of you know, this was the longest known ignition of Raptor engines in history, let alone three of them at the same time. And during the ascent, again, as many of you know, since I'm sure you've watched this over and over again, one of the engines shut down. However, that was intentional. Then two engines were to remain to get the Starship into position, and then it cut down to one engine, which continued to burn for another minute and a half, which produced enough thrust to essentially keep the, the SN8 at apogee, and then it performed its necessary belly flop maneuver. So as I said in previous videos, the atmospheric raptors were simply designed to get the Starship up to about 12 kilometers, a little over 12 kilometers is what it eventually attained, at least from the sources that I've checked, and this is what they did. Unfortunately, this is never really going to be repeated anywhere in the solar system that the Starship is used. Vacuum raptors will be used on Mars when the Starship ship takes off from the equivalent of sea level there. Oh, there goes one of the engines, and the other engines are gimbling kind of wildly, but once again, this was intentional, keep in mind. So, and then, as I said, it cuts down to one engine in a little bit to get the starship into position. However, this was just to get the starship into a spot to where it could perform its aerobatics. That's all it was supposed to do, and it carried out its task beautifully. So how did it do on the aerobatic front? Well, I feel compelled to give the SN8 an A plus on this. And the reason I give it such a high score is because this was the very first practical use of these flaps and the aerodynamic qualities of the Starship. And it maneuvered the Starship almost perfectly back to the landing pad. 
It was unbelievably precise, especially for such an early test. And so, as a result, I don't see what else to give it. This thing performed magnificently when it came to accuracy and maneuvering it through the atmosphere. So far, so good. Now, maybe you think I'm going to change my tune when it comes to the landing portion, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give the Starship a B plus on this one. As I mentioned before, the ship came down almost precisely on the pad, and even though it came in too hot, about 30 meters per second too hot, it would have been able to reduce its speed significantly if it hadn't had those pressure problems, and you see the green flames there that was caused by the header tanks. Let's have another look at that. Okay, so the header tank pressure drops and the engine has nothing to eat except basically itself. Things like its copper tank and that sort of thing. And that's why you have the green flame is because of the copper. And as a result, it didn't have enough fuel or enough thrust in order to reduce its speed significantly. And as you can see here from this Space.com video, it explains why all of this pretty much took place. But nevertheless, this landing very close to worked. It was so close to being successful that once again I feel compelled to give it a very high grade. So the question remains, what the hell am I so concerned about? Well, it can be summed up in one sentence. The Starship took less than two minutes to get from 12 kilometers down to this explosion. And that was way too fast in an atmosphere as dense as ours. But nobody seems very concerned about all of this. Mars, here we come, Elon says, with a huge grin on his face, no doubt. And I can't blame him for being happy. I mean, it was a really good test. But the fact remains that if you average out the speed, the Starship plunged at terminal velocity. It didn't have any speed bleed off to speak of. And if that happened on Mars, Elon probably wouldn't be nearly as happy about the situation, because the terminal velocity on Mars, as I have said many times before, is a thousand kilometers per hour, not 200 as happened yesterday. And this is where I'm afraid I'm going to get myself into a little bit of trouble, because a thousand kilometers per hour is 277 meters per second not 68 or 67 meters per second as depicted in this simulation, which again is supposedly on Mars. It's an enormous difference. Even if you reduce the speed by 20%, it's still a massive, massive difference. So in terms of speed bleed off, SN8, in my opinion, gets a D. And the reason I'm giving it a D instead of an F is because there may be modifications that are coming. As a matter of fact, Elon has talked about significant modifications coming to SN15, which may address a lot of these issues. But the fact remains that Starship fell pretty much at terminal velocity yesterday and did not have any speed bleed off in an atmosphere that's a hundred times as dense as what's on Mars. What is this going to mean? If the Starship tries a last second pull up on Mars at the distance that they did yesterday at a speed of a thousand or even 800 kilometers per hour, the G-forces involved with that would kill anybody on board, turn them into jelly actually. This is something that is going to have to be addressed before we seriously start talking about putting people to the red planet. And this is why when I put suicide dive into my titles, it's not just clickbait. This is a real serious issue. It's incredibly difficult to land huge masses on the surface of the red planet. And yesterday's test did not give me any kind of confidence that we are going to be able to land on Mars without pulling up a lot earlier and using a lot more fuel to decelerate. Trying to use the atmosphere to reduce the speed of the Starship does not appear to be effective. 
Now, at the same time, I could be completely wrong about this because there could be modifications coming that are going to do a lot to bleed off speed. But I have to base this video on what I saw yesterday. Now look, no doubt the people at SpaceX, including Elon, know all about this issue and have a plan to do something about it. I have every confidence that they have some way of making this work. But the fact of the matter is, if we have to look at SN8 by itself as a test, then we also have to look at everything that happened. Every success and every failure. And for the most part, really for every part, this was a tremendously successful test. However, not unconditionally successful. And that's something that we are going to have to remember as we come to realize as time goes on that landing on Earth is not the same as landing on Mars. Now look, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I want the Starship to succeed. This is mankind's best bet if we're talking about colonizing the Red Planet. This ship must succeed, at least to one extent or another. You've seen a lot of my videos, my suicide dive videos, where I've talked about using the Starship and alternate methods in terms of landing on the Red Planet. And in addition to that, we don't know what other kinds of modifications are coming. As I said before, Elon is planning on making a lot of modifications to SN15. A lot of these things could include more robust flaps, perhaps fixed wings, who knows, something. But it has to be something that's going to bleed off a lot of Starship speed in the atmosphere. Because if we're talking about a terminal velocity of 1,000 kilometers per hour, and the Starship cannot significantly reduce that. As happened yesterday, there was no real, as you saw in the video, no real significant reduction in speed from terminal velocity. And given that terminal velocity is five times as fast on Mars, that's something that's going to be, well, suicidal if duplicated there. But I have every confidence that SpaceX knows all of this, that they have plans to rectify it. But still, since this video is about the SN8 test, and since I have to react based on what I saw yesterday, this is my one concern. By the way, it's my only concern. Everything else went so well. The belly flop, even the ascent with the engines failing and that sort of thing. SN8 did its very best to accomplish its mission no matter what got in the way. And yeah, it landed too fast and blew up, but that's really not an issue. These are things that can be rectified. It is the descent through the ultra-thin Martian atmosphere that is the major obstacle that stands between what happened yesterday and mankind stepping foot on the red planet for the first time from a starship. And everything that happens between now and then is going to be absolutely critical. There are many solutions, I'm confident. I've suggested many of them in my videos, but still, we're going to need a solution. We're going to need innovation if we're going to overcome this, this very substantial obstacle, an obstacle we always knew was going to be there. Mars is an unforgiving alien world. It is not easy to land on, and it is going to resist our efforts to colonize it. But in spite of that, I am confident that we will be able to with this ship with the appropriate modifications. So until that happens, until we do step foot on the Martian surface for the first time, having overcome all of these issues, then I urge all of you to stay angry about space.